Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So there's an old Jewish story about a man who had accumulated a certain amount of gold. And he didn't want his gold to be stolen. So he went out into the forest in a secret place and dug a hole and buried that gold. And every once in a while, he would go out and he would unearth that gold and just look at it and hold it and feel it and test its weight. And just, he was just enamored with the gold that he had. And then he'd rebury it and go back home. And he would do this occasionally, once every you know, month or months, a few months, just to check out on his gold. Well, one day, a thief noticed him going on to the woods, and a thief went and followed him and saw where he had buried his gold. And so the thief went and got a rock, a stone, a rock, and painted it gold. And then he went to the forest and dug up the gold and put the gold rock in its place. And the story was that if, if all his gold does is sit there in the ground and he picks it up to look at it, what difference is it if it's real gold or just a stone painted gold? It made no difference. You almost have an attitude like that taking place in our story today. In our story, Jesus goes away on a, no, sorry, in, Jesus, in our story, a wealthy man goes away on a journey. And he trusts his servants with a large amount of wealth, a large gift. And he entrusts them each to manage until his return. Now let's be, be clear that the amount he gives away is a, is a national lottery size amount. The amount of a talent was approximately equal to 16 years worth of wages. 16 years worth of wages. So all three of them got a huge amount that, they, that was entrusted to them for them to use and invest in everything until the master returns. So in Jesus' stories, what will each of them do with this unimaginable amount of wealth? <coughs> Some years ago, I think it was around the turn of the century, Bono, the, the singer of YouTube who had become very wealthy but was also a Christian, gathered together some of the wealthiest people in this country and challenged them. His challenge was, you have been given a lot of wealth. What, what good are you going to do with it? Do you just keep it buried? Let it grow interest? Or are you going to do something good with it? And that was the beginning of the Gates Foundation, where Bill Gates and, and uh, so a company um, invested in health care in Africa and has invested in other things because they're trying to use their wealth to make a difference. Last week, I, I heard a story about Ralph Nader has written a book. Ralph Nader, who was the person looking for people of corruption, wrote a book about some of the best CEOs in this country, which is totally not what Ralph Nader normally does. But he wrote a book about the best CEOs in this country, the ones that are making a difference, the ones that are using their position to, to assist their workers, the ones who are making a difference in their community, the ones who are making a difference because of their position, using what they have for the good of others. You see, this story, though, is not really about money and wealth. It's about using the blessings God has given you for the sake of others, for the kingdom of God. You see, in our story, Jesus is coming to the end of his ministry. He's coming to the end. This is the end of the public ministry, and the very next chapter, Jesus is, you know, Last Supper and the crucifixion and the death and all that. So this is the end of Jesus' public ministry. And he is about to entrust this ministry to his disciples. And so he tells stories to his disciples to help them understand what it's all about. And so he tells this story where he's saying to the disciples, I have gifted you. I have gifted you tremendously. More than you can imagine, I have gifted you. Now what are you going to do with those gifts? How are you going to use the gifts that I have gifted you with? Or 
Are you going to just bury them? Sometimes we think our gifts are insignificant. Sometimes we look at others and say, wow, they got so much more gifts than I did. And we think our gifts are insignificant. But in the story that Jesus tells, one talent of gold by itself is equal to 16 years worth of wages. It was not insignificant, even though we sometimes look at it that way. So, was the third servant undervaluing his gift because he was comparing it to the other servants? Or was he overwhelmed by the immense amount of the gift and didn't know what to do with it because being a servant, he wasn't used to managing that much? Or was he afraid of the master? Or did he, was he afraid that others would see him using those gifts and wondering how he got them? Did he see the talent that the master gave him as a gift or as a burden? You see, when we think about how God has gifted us, we have the same kind of questions brought to us. Has God gifted us a gift or a burden? God has blessed each of us in ways that we cannot count. So what do we do with that? And then we have the other readings today. The other readings are about not taking God for granted. We have a little bit of that in Jesus' story with the master, but the other, the other stories you know, uh, also talk about that. God, for example, is not to be ignored. From our reading in Zephaniah, we read, at that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the men who are complacent, who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do evil. It doesn't matter. God's not going to hurt me. God's not going to make any difference. And we come, become complacent. And Zephaniah reminds us there's a day of reckoning coming. Or in Thessalonians, we read, But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. You see, God has gifted each of us. And God has gifted us for the purpose of being a blessing to others. That's what the kingdom of God looks like. People are using what they have to be a blessing to those around them. And we do this not in order to try to gain favor from God, because God has already loved us, and he showed that in Jesus, his death and resurrection. He showed us how much he values us. He already values us, so we don't have to do good just to try to please God. We don't have to do good just to impress God, because God already loves us unconditionally. We don't try to do good just to try to make it to heaven. You ask a lot of people out there, how are you, get, how are you think you can go to heaven? They say, I hope so. And you say, why? And they say, because I've lived a pretty good life. Sorry, that doesn't cut it. But the fact is that we've already been granted the gift of heaven. We already have eternal life. God has given that to us as a gift. We don't do good to try to please others. That's not our goal or our purpose because you're already loved and accepted by God. And we don't do it for selfish gain. We don't try to do good some, to some, for somebody else so that we can get something in return, so that God will bless us in return. We don't do it because that's selfish. That's not doing good for others. Rather, in Jesus' story, he says, you do good, you serve the master, 
because the master has given you such an immense gift. And so because the master has gifted us so immensely, now how are we going to use those gifts for the kingdom of God? How are we going to use those gifts to make a difference? How are we going to use those gifts to share God's love with others? You see, we are called to use the gifts God has granted us simply because we have been loved and blessed. And so because we've been loved and blessed, we care for one another. And each of the gifts God has given us have tremendous value, have tremendous value, and are to be used in the service of the king, the kingdom of God. Please stand. Lord God, we thank you that you have entrusted your gifts to us.